Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel, and something totally new, brand new in fact, and a little bit different, we have a little bit of fun today, I mean we always have fun here on the channel, but we're gonna have a little bit different kind of fun here today, with a new game that just got released to early access on June 1st, I'm recording this here on June 2nd, in going medieval, as you can see here on the right hand says, it says early access, and this is gonna be a little bit different, Usually with games where I even do first look reviews, I pop in, I play maybe a couple hours just to kind of get the lay of the land, and then go in and do one of these just so I'm not completely, you know, walking around blind. But with this one, I did pop in, read some of the tutorial tips just to kind of familiarize, but as far as actual gameplay and figuring things out, I have done, I have done nothing. And I want to go on this journey with you and discover this game together with you. It could be a complete disaster, but we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun along the way. So what is going medieval? Well, the best way I could say it is Castle Rim World. That's right, it is a colony building game and you're gonna hear a lot on YouTube and everywhere else that this is very Rim World-esque. It's very Rim World ex uh, expired, inspired. And that's for obvious reasons because Rim World is really the colony builder game out there. I absolutely love it because how can you not like ha being stuck on a planet with a, a naked cannibal? I mean, that's just, that's, that's good times right there. But anyway, what I've seen so far is maybe going medieval is a little bit, a little bit less grim dark, but it is the Middle Ages and it is a colony builder game. And uh, it is actually available both on Steam and Nexus GG. So you can find that link down in the description if you so choose. I think right now it's still 10% off. So it's like $22 and some change here in the US. And uh, this game, I was not given a code for it. I saw it and went, this looks really cool. So I used money to buy it. And the money I used to buy was actually money made possible by you guys the viewers and through patreon i use patreon funds and some youtube funds to pay the 22 dollars and some change for this to bring content to you because that is what i do and that's what i promise you know any patreon money any of that kind of stuff that comes in i reinvest back into the channel to bring you know software hardware upgrades so on if you want to figure find out how you can support the channel uh, uh, through Patreon, link is down in the description. Uh, you could also be join and become a channel member like a David Marcon did. So thank you, David, for that. Or you could just let the annoying ads play. That helps a lot. But of course, views and comments. Well, that's the way forward. And I'm sure there will be a few comments about this game as we play it. And you saying, Run Builder Guy, what are you doing? So first of all, I'm gonna go through some of the options here. So very basic, you've got graphics, audio, the game options, and so on. I mean, game options. It, it's all very back endy stuff, so we're not gonna worry about that. Language, you can set a language. I've, of course, got it set to English, but you've got a number of languages to choose from there. And the roadmap of the game. So, I'm gonna show you this here first. Welcome to Going Medieval. Thank you for your support. You're welcome going medieval. Please note that we are actively developing this game, so you may notice that some areas are still in progress. Rest assured that we will update the game regularly to add features and to make the experience more robust over time. Should you encounter any bugs, please reach out to us on our Discord server. You can actually join the Realm Builder Court Discord server through a link in the description. Nice little bit of self-promo there. Uh, server or report them through the in-game bug report. So plan future updates, trading in merchants, caravan, settlement diplomacy, settler social interactions, religious influence, because religion is part of the game, fire and flammability, accumulating snow, organic dirt paths, mounted siege weaponry, raiding other settlements, vassal system, map factions, prisoner system, taming wildlife, animal husbandry, grand objectives, natural caves, ruins, shelves, and weapon racks. Uh, so plus more structures, more music, more map types, more resources, more siege weapons, more research items, more quality of life improvements. So the question, of course, is what do we have <laughs> with this game? And why did I decide to grab Going Medieval and put it here on the channel because recently I did a little channel update where I talked about that 
um, you know, fantasy sci-fi as much as I love, love, love that stuff. This is a history gaming channel, history strategy games. I mean, colony building is a strategy game, let's face it. But it has uh, historical overtones. I always love playing RimWorld. And I thought about, you know, what about putting RimWorld on the channel? Well, there are a few things that speak against that. One, it doesn't fit the now issued, I hate this term, mission statement of what this channel is. And it's not historical, it's sci-fi. So if I did a sci-fi uh, strategy gaming channel, we would be playing Stellaris and RimWorld, but we're not. So when I saw this come out, Going Medieval, uh, I think about two months ago, I did a little survey here on the channel and asked, what is your favorite historical time period? And I listed a whole bunch of them. And the medieval middle age period that I will just loosely define as the year 500 until the year 1500 uh, was definitely the area that had the most interest. I think of it was about 40, 45%. And about 2,000 of you uh, participated in that poll, I think. May have been less. I'm going to save 2,000. I didn't actually check. I probably should have checked. Anyway, and it was overwhelming. So when I see a middle medieval game pop up, especially one that's new and looks a little bit intriguing, I'm like, ah, this could be something for you guys and for me. It fits the mantra. It's historically inspired. Of course, it's not a historical game, but it is historically um, inspired. And we will delve into it here today and do the first steps here. So we're going to start a new game. And we can either do survival, so enemy raids happen frequently in this mode, and their difficulty increases over time. We can do peaceful, there are no enemy attacks. Choose this game mode if you prefer to focus on constructing your settlement and taking care of your settlers. Or standard, your settlement will experience enemy raids as well as environmental e events. Raids occur at steady intervals, their difficulty adapts to, as you progress. Uh, difficulty, we can do very easy, easy, normal, difficult, or hard. We're going to stick to normal. All right, moving forward. So we can do a new life, a lone wolf, or we can add a new scenario. We're not going to do that. We're just going to do... So a lone wolf is settler starts alone with meager resources in the harshest of conditions. I don't know what I'm doing. So we're just going to start with a new life. A new life, each settler has a story about the past they left far behind. But now this tattered group has a common goal to build a new home together. Recommended scenario for first-time players, which I am which pretty much everybody is at this point. Starting season will be spring. Resources, we've got packaged meals, wood, hay, cabbage, chronicles, linen cloth, simple healing kit, mechanical components, and ale. Uh, equipment we have, let's scroll down here. Uh, wooden spear, steel short sword, short bow, long bow, uh, wooden buckler, and linen gambeson. Let me know. Uh, settler constraints, number of settlers, three, the age range we have here, 23 to 55, height range, 1 meter 50 to 1 meter 90, weight range, 50 kg to 110, men, women, 50, 50, uh, restitutions for oak brethren. I will get into that in a second. And then of course, all the clothes. So let's click on next. Okay. We get to pick a place. So we can be in a valley. We can be on a hillside or we can be in a mountain. We're just going to start in a valley. We've got plentiful vegetation, fertile soil, and clay, moderate amount of limestone, lesser amounts of gold, silver, iron, and salt. Uh, heraldry. Let's see. Can I find something I like? I like. And it's all pretty bog standard. I've seen kind of the same ones here a few times. And yeah, let's just go with the dog. And the name of the place, we are going to call it... Realmberg, because why not? Map size default, because that's all you have right now in early access. That will obviously change and get larger with time. Next. Okay, we've got three settlers. We've got Osmond, Caradas, Steven, Freeman, and Edward Notley. So we're going to rename all these guys. We are going to rename Osmond. We're going to call him, and I'm not going to, like, try to find new ones. We're just going to go with these guys and kind of see what goes. We're going to name these after patron supporters. So this one will be David after David, who is one of the um, heroes of the realm. That's the, the tier on Patreon where I put you into the game as much as I can. Here we're going to have Grim. And here we are going to have John. Very nice. Okay, so now let's take a look through this. So group skills, 
What are we good at? What are we not good at? So the higher the number, the better it is. So uh, group-wise, we're very passionate about construction. We're passionate about marksmanship and passionate about tailoring. Uh, let's see. Uh, at a quick glance, uh, we're decent carp. We've got decent carpentry, intellectual skills, marksman skills, medicine, smithing, and speechcraft. Animal handling not so great, but animal handling isn't really in the game yet. Botany nah, not so good. Yeah, not so great at construction. So what do these all mean? Animal handling means taming, feeding, trading, and hunting animals. Okay, maybe animal handling is important. I, I feel like hunting should be separate, personally. And we've got botany, uh, used for sowing, growing, harvesting, gathering plants, herbs, and fruits. So he's very, so David is very, you're very passionate about botany, but um, yeah, you kind of suck at it. Carpentry, better at crafting wooden items such as bows. So let's say you're average. I don't know what average scores are here. Construction. You are super, you're very passionate about construction, David. Better at making bricks, chiseling rocks, and overall construction speed. Uh, decent at culinary, used for cooking and butchering. Again, like RimWorld, I strongly assume. Um, harvesting, so on. Probably not going to have David do that. But my assumption is he's passionate, so Settler will gain two and a half times more XP for the skill. Construction mean uh, the two stars here mean he will gain four times the XP for the skill. So he'll level up. And we're not going to put him on harvesting because we need food and we don't need David to destroy the food. He's an average cook. Intellectual. So, okay. Used for research and faster research. Marksmanship. Better with ranged weapons. Medicine. Used for healing other workers. Self-healing and brewing spirits and medicinal drugs. Melee, so deals more damage with weapons overall. Higher levels can use advanced weapons. Mining, skill used for mining and digging. Smithing, oh, this is your thing, man. David, this is, this is your thing. You're not passionate about it, but you're good at it. Creates better weapons and armor out of metal. Creates ingots faster. Speechcraft, good at bargaining, helping, and cheering other workers. Conversational skill. Helps turn enemies into allies. And then we have got tailoring. Better at working with cloth and leather. Creating clothing and leather armor. Background, he's a weary armorer. So David could bend anything to his will, especially bright metal. Formerly apprenticed to a master from Chartres. David's hammer and nimble fingers had worked long years in the armories of the London Arsenal. He had saved countless lives. After the apocalypse, David was tired, truth be told. His joints ached and he couldn't fathom how the end of days had passed him by. David still oiled his blades, strangely envious of comrades slain at St. Omer. Somehow David soldiered on. So smithing plus 12, carpentry plus 5, melee plus 5. Pseudonym, he is the philosopher of Manduicidum. David once read half a thing somewhere, maybe, about turning lead into gold. Apparently, urine is involved. He may be taking the piss. Smithing plus three. Well played. So his perks. He is Snow White. He loves nothing better than the biting air and crisp frost of mid-winter. He thrives in the cold. And he is Churl. Mean and surly, barely even civil. David is hard to work with and harder still to befriend. So mood target, minus 10%. Mood change, speed, plus 10%. Great. Just great. Religious alignment. So he is practicing restitutionist. The settler needs just an occasional quick prayer to satisfy the religious needs. Needs They require a church of restitution, shrine, or chapel for the religious uh, observance. You can see it goes from left to right. From Oak Brethren Zella to uh, Devout Oak Brethren, practicing Oak Brethren, and then practicing Restitutionist, Devout Restitutionist, and Restitutionist Zella. So what I'm going to assume, as I slurred my speech there, is that to the left, let's call them the Old Gods, and then Christianity to the right. Could be. Age 29. His weight is 64 kilograms, and he is 1 meter 86 tall. So he's tall and pretty thin. Then we've got Grim Freeman. Um, what is he? So he's passionate about marksmanship, but he's not very good at it. He is the intellectual here, but he's not the most intellectual. Pretty average and all of this kind of stuff. A little worried. Botany. We're, we're, we're down here. Botany's not good. The, we, we really need good botanists. 
Good at uh, medicine. Melee is average. Looks like we're very average there. Mining. He's he's passionate, very passionate about it. He's passionate about smithing, but can't do it. Decent speech craft, and he is passionate about tailoring, so that's good. His perks are he's hedonist. Without a bit of excitement, Grim quickly gets bored and starts causing trouble. Quite the drama queen. And then Erudite. Grim has a rare intellect and could even be called gifted. He learns extremely quickly. So intellectual plus five and XP gain plus 15%. That's nice. Uh, nothing for hedonist. He is a despicable barber. So need a close shave? When it was time to remove a troublesome beard or festering limb, Grim would merrily oblige. He loved gossip almost as much as letting blood. Grim was often the first to know, and for many, the last they would see. After the apocalypse, Grim took to the hills on a rampage as order crumbled. For the privilege, Grim gathered a vile band of ruffians and killed and burned at will. He was exhilarated by chaos, amused by desecration, and not to be underestimated. So speechcraft, medicine, intellectual, melee, and marksmanship go up. He's not known as anything. Religious alignment, he is a devout restitutionist. He is 26 years old, weighs 58 kilograms, 1 meter 54. So he's kind of a short dude. And then John. John, what is John? Animal handling, no bueno. Carpentry, he's pretty good there. Botany, he's our best botanist. Construction, he's very passionate about it. Culinary skills, he will not be cooking. He's pretty intellectual. He's a good marksman, so he's going to get ranged weapons. Medicine. It's okay, he's passionate about melee, but he's not really good at it. He's not going to be mining. He's a decent smith. Speechcraft, not so great. Tailoring, not so great. He is stout. John jokes that his ample belly is a great asset, storing energy for lean times. Getting around is slower, though. So appetite plus 10%. Consumption duration minus 5%. Movement speed minus 5%. And he is 40 winks. John only needs to shut his eye for the briefest of catnaps to feel fully restored, so his sleep recovery speed plus 5%, sleep depletion speed minus 10%. He is a thrifty master builder. John loved getting stuck into a complex project. He spent many years crossing Europe in search of instruction. John understood how to create gravity-defying structures with stone and iron taught by the nameless Genius Cathedral Builders. When the world changed, John had left the silent streets of Gainsthorpe with a cart and started collecting metal. From churches to manors, John stripped them clean and melted it all down. Sir Hugh Gaveston and William of York would surely be needing swords. All right, so he's got bonuses to intellectual carpentry construction, smithing. He is known as the Broken of Gainsthorpe. It was said that John's adventuring career came to an abrupt end when he took an arrow to the knee. He does have a funny walk, so marksman plus three. He is devout oak brethren. So basically, we've got old gods, new gods, and a dude in the middle. So he's 29, 74 kilograms, one meter 50. So these two are short. He's short and stout. He's just short. And he's tall and skinny. You can kind of see that here, actually. It's kind of cool. You can see he's tall, he's short, and he's stout. All right, let's go. So there we are, Realm Bird. We've got our Settlers, Standard. We can still change all this if we wanted to. Show tutorial tips. We're going to tick that off just because I've gone through these. So that's surely going to be a problem. Anyway, let's embark. A new life. The plague had ravaged the British Isles. Old millions went to an early grave. And those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. As the cold retreated, heralding spring of the year 1353, David, Grimm, and John set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of the land as their own, as was their right in the eyes of God and under the law. Here they may lay down the foundations for some kind of future. Perhaps hope will follow. Grimm is confident, defiant even. We will make this work. We will take our share of land, we will build there, and we will defend it. Many have tried, some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought. Yet many have also prevailed. Have faith, the place we found will stand centuries from now. Our dis <laughs> descendants, I almost said desiccants, <laughs> descendants will be there still. After many travails, they arrived in a valley with golden plains cut through by a snaking river. For John, it conjured visions of bountiful harvests, song and wine, a place to put down roots, a homeland. They decided to title it Realmburg.
an excerpt from Lieber uh, Hermogenen by the Venerable Fabian New Exeter, circa 1365. All right, here we are. I'm going to pause this game right away. And we're going to take a look at where we are here in Realmburg. So, WASDQE, as per usual. So what do we think? Let's get a little impression here. I think, let's scroll in here, let's look at these fine gentlemen. There is David, the giant, and Grim the Grim. And Stout John, very nice, very nice indeed. I love the artwork. I'll be honest, it's not... I mean, if you've played um, RimWorld, you know, I mean, you know that the graphics are really cool, but that's not what this is about. You know, if you want a more graphically pleasing type of colony game, I suggest Surviving the Aftermath. Really fun game that I have and will not feature here on the channel because it's not really historical. I mean, this isn't historical, but it's history inspired. You know what I'm saying. All right, so let's go through the UI in some of our impressions. First of all, I'm actually going to start over here. So we've got historical records, so population count going through. And then the history. So there are going to be historical entries added to the historical record. Then you've got the almanac. Ooh, almanac. Almanac. Which explains everything, including usually you would have right here. Tutorials. I do suggest you either play with tutorial tips on or you just read them. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you have played Realm, Realm World. No. Wow. Aren't I full of myself? Rim World. Then you're going to be fairly used to some of this stuff. It's going to look a little familiar. Uh, then you've got report bugs and feedback. You can also do screenshot mode. So here, take a screenshot and close that. And then you have your options here. It can change what the heraldry of Realmburg looks like. We're going to resume now. Okay, let's go to the left. So we've got our characters here. So we can click on a David. So his background, his pseudonym, all this kind of stuff, his alignment. Then his inventory, what he has. He has, right now, he's got good linen winter clothes. How much he can carry, up to 60 kilograms. What do we have here? We've got his head armor, his body armor, his damage per second. Oh, that's interesting. Precision, 82% precision. His range. And the temperature he can deal with. Okay. And we've got his skills listed here. Attributes, general. So his movement, speed, his appetite... So, settlers' nutrition expended per hour, consumption duration, sleep recovery speed, mood target, mood change speed. Remember, he's, yeah. Uh, sleep depletion speed, hit points, recovery, wound regeneration, motor function, clumsiness, XP gain. And then the job related. So, this is his XP gain by attribute base value 100% and plus 1% construction. So, okay. So, this is what he can or can't do. He's not, botany is not his thing. So, I guess 100% is average. He's pretty decent at that. Then his stats. So, we got food. We got sleep. We got alcohol requirements. The amount of alcohol a settler requires, if this need is not met, the settler will be unhappy. Entertainment and religious activities. Okay. And then the mood. He is uh, optimism, plus 25. His mood right now is 48%. Mood target is 80. So you want to get it to 80. If he drops down to 30, he's annoyed. 0% is broken. And 0% mood, they may bugger off. His hit points, uh, blood. The amount of blood a person or animal has. Okay, consciousness. Okay, so if it reaches 0, he will faint. Stomach. So this is how well the stomach is. Mild stomach ache is 30%. So he's he's pretty decent here. He's at what? 93%. And pain. How much pain is he in? Okay, so we got you. And we can jump to you. Very nice. His stats. We can draft him for a task. We can tell him to attack. And we can banish him. Aggressively neutral. Okay. So we've got them. And if, you, if we just hover over to them, we can kind of see what they do okay so let's start at the top left we've got jobs so just like in a different game rim world uh you can set up the different jobs you can either left mouse click or right mouse click to priority highest priority is one lowest priority is five or you can just do priority none 
Nice thing is we can just hover over them and we can see what they are doing and then we can adjust accordingly. I'm not going to do that just yet. We're going to go through here and kind of look at this schedule. So we can say who needs what type of schedule. I know one of these guys did not really need to sleep and I want to say it was John. Uh, John 40 wing. So he doesn't need to sleep a lot. So my goal here is maybe John does more night shift. Sleep, anything, and leisure and work time. We can manage, so who gets what? Manage one-handed, melee two, or manage. No weapons, all weapons. We're just going to leave that, or no weapons, uh -huh. right now. And I guess that we can tell them what they should or shouldn't wear. Got to learn that. Research, we can't do that yet because we don't have a research bench yet. And then the region itself. All right, so here we are in the greater province. Let's see, we've got Colchester. They're friendly. We've got Thornth Thornthwaite. They are friendly. And we have Penpot. They are friendly. Ashburn is friendly. And Glassthorpe is friendly. Not so friendly. We've got Winterborn. These are Forest Bandit Enemy Settlement. This is Enemy Settlement Progeny. Slaith Waite. And down here, we have Maryport, Enemy Settlement, uh, and these are Forest Bandits. Region influence, 2.9%. As, as your settlement grows, so does your influence in the region. To gain influence, you must enrich your wealth by amassing resources and construction, constructing buildings. Victory in battle and repelling enemy raids increases your influence even faster. Reaching 100% influence means your settlement is the most influential in the region. Cool. All right, I'll click on that again. All right, what do we have here? This is layers. So that's the one thing. That, one of the big differences you have here between uh, going medieval in RimWorld is it's a 3D game. So you can go up and down. You have multi-story buildings you can build, which is really cool. So you can go layer up or just Z or control and mouse wheel. I don't know if we can really do that yet. Nope, it's not really anything we can do. Uh, you can see the number changing in the top left anyway. And then you can do down as well you can hide the roof elements uh you can hide treetops you can show overlay of rooms detected show colored grid overlay of zones show item indicators okay uh group resources and resource panel and reset camera view boom we did that all right what do we got down here in the bottom left so this shows you what the terrain is so the position on the map 100 percent grass uh, travel speed, outside stability, four. Then we've got a base. So this is for building. So we can build wooden walls. Five, wood, not enough allowed resources. We can do a wooden floor. We can do a wooden door. We can do a wooden window. We can do a thatched roof. And wooden stair straight. Then production. So butchering table. Butchering table, uh, station for hanging, preparing meat from carcasses, a campfire, a uh, fire for light, warmth, and cooking. Gather round. Pretty good story. And then, of course, the basic research table. So we'll definitely need to do that. So what I'm gathering from this is we need wood. Then we've got our furniture. So for furniture, we can build here a clay brazier. Wooden table medium. Uh, so this is glowing wood or charcoal for warmth. Uh, then we've got a torch. Light in the darkness, tables, a hay sleeping spot, and then leisure. We've got a restitution shrine, a uh, oak brethren shrine. So we're going to have to have both because we have both. And then a backgammon table for just general entertainment. And then miscellaneous, we can do a banner single medium. A uh, jaunty pennant flutters in the breeze. Then an unmarked grave. That's nice. Uh, a pyre, commit a body to the hungry flames and reduce mortal remains. I'm assuming if you are Oak Brethren, you want a pyre. If you are a restitutionist, you want to be in the grave. And then we can build a fence for organizing crops and livestock. Then we've got warfare. We've got a wooden merlon. Uh, merlin? Merlon? I don't know. Wooden stockades have offered valid protection. We don't have enough wood. And we can do a stick trap. Very cool. And then zones. A default stockpile. Perfect. So down here, we've got the different commands. We can tell them to chop, cut plants, deconstruct, cancel, allow, hunt, mine, and harvest. All right. So we got all that down. 
So what do we have down here? These are all of our resources. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to do a stockpile. And let's just have this be a stockpile zone. We can either do a default stockpile, a dumping stockpile designed areas of waste is stored, and a warfare stockpile designated areas where weaponry and armor is stored. Okay. We do anything now. All right. So whoop. No okay, so here default stockpile, we can say what we want in there. Okay, so here we can shrink that. All right. So, whew. So it is there 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 is information here. If I left click it, this is everything going there. So when you do a dumping stockpile or you want to separate food and stuff like that, you can kind of change all this so it is like in that other game that I'm going to try really hard not to mention all the time. What else we got here? We've got we can deconstruct, we can copy um copy and then paste, expand zone and shrink zone. Okay, so we've got all that done, and so we can allow, uh, we will allow all of this, and okay, so we have now allowed all of that so they can have access to it. Anyway, we'll just keep going here. I'm learning. We're all learning. We're, we're going to do something. We're going to make a little haul and, and all that good stuff. So now let's go to jobs. Okay, who can do what? David. So botany, not your thing. So botany would be harvest. So we're going to go with uh, five if need be. Animal handling. So he's not really a hunter. Put that out five. What can he do? Um, tend. So tend, tend to wounds of others. So he is... Medicine, five. Yeah, we'll just put that as four. Convalescence. Um, so this is chill if you're wounded. We'll bump that up in priority. Hunt, he's not that good. Construction. So how is he at construction? Five. We're just going to leave that as three, but he's very passionate about it. And right now, we do need to construct some things. Growing, he is passionate about, but he... okay. So here it shows the relevant skill, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, not really good at growing pan growing pants. So we're going to drop that down to a four. He is passionate about it. Harvesting. Yeah, he's not good at that. Mining. So we'll leave that at a three. I'm not worried about that right now, so we're going to drop the priority on that. Cut plants. Botany. And drop that down. Cooking. So he's actually pretty good at cooking. So we'll bump him up in that. Crafting. Okay, we'll just leave that as is. So I guess there's nothing really to find there. Smithing. So he's really good at smithing. So that's going to be his highest priority. Carpentry. It's average. We'll leave that at his three. Tailoring. Yeah, he's not really good at that. So yeah, well, he does need to tailor. Research. Yeah, yeah, he's not really much of a researcher. Steward. Taking care of basic tasks, locking doors, closing windows. Yeah, we're going to pop that as high. Hall. We're going to put that as a two. Then what we can do here, we've got Grim. So Tend. Uh, medicine. He's very good at that. So he's going to be high priority. Highest, nah, we'll give him highest priority if someone's hurt. Uh, convalescence, Wild Wounds Heal. Pop that up. Hunting. Okay, actually, he's better at hunting. So put him at three. We'll put him at four. Construction, yeah, average. Growing, okay, he's okay. Harvesting, okay. Mining is decent, but I'm not worried about mining right now. So actually, let's pop these down to five. Cut plants. Okay, cooking. Yeah, no. We'll just not have you cook. Crafting. Smithing. Uh, we'll put it at five because uh, he does have a passion for it. Carpentry. I leave that at average. Tailoring. We'll put him at two. Research. Uh, he's he's a good researcher. We'll put that at two. Stewardship. Uh, this is taking care of basic. So yeah, we'll have that. Actually, we'll have these at two. Hauling at two. Two two. These are all the base skills. 
Everybody kind of has to do. All right. So John, idle medicine. So he can tend to people. We'll leave that as a three. I'll actually put that as a two in case we're not on the same shift. Hunting. Ah, he is our hunter. So he will be the hunter. Construction. Eh, he's average. We'll, we'll bump him up because he's the best in construction. Botany. He's our top botanist. So we'll have him grow, and we'll have him harvest. He's our top guy there. Mining. Yeah, we're going to take that off. Cutting plants. You're going to be a top guy there. Cooking. Yeah, we'll just have that at zero. So David will be our cook. Crafting. We'll leave that as is. Smithing. We'll leave that as a, we'll leave that as a three. Carpentry. Ah, he's very good. So he'll be our carpenter. Tailoring. That down. Research. He will be our researcher. All right. So we've got our jobs done. Now let's head over to schedules and work. Okay. So we got sleep. We got work. John is the guy. He'll be on night shift. So we'll have him here and we'll actually have him sleep there so we'll see if that's good enough uh, so he'll have work then we'll put in a little bit of leisure here a little bit of work there and then a little bit of work there and work right there and the other guys are going to have the regular sleep schedule uh, how many do we have one two three four oh, i can just do the math five six i put in one two three four five so actually, we'll have him do anything there. Then leisure skills. We will have leisure here. And we as well put in... Eh, let's not... Let's have them do some leisure. Let's have leisure right here. He's working. They're having fun. All right. So we're going to have them work here. Work here. Do anything there. And then work a little here. Work a little there. Yeah, I think, I mean, for a try, we'll see how this goes. Um, well, there you go. So they've got one, two, three, four, five hours of anything time. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six hours of anything, but he's also sleeping less. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. Manage, I'm not going to worry about that real quick. Okay, so let's take a look here at David. David... Uh, melee. So, let's see. Sturdy wooden spear. We've got a sword. So he's got melee nine. He's got melee nine. And he's got melee three, but he's the marksman. So a bow. Sturdy longbow, wooden spear, or a sword. So John. Let's see, can I just drag that? Um, how do I do this? So, hold on real quick. Okay, so I tried to go here with the manage screen and see if they will equip themselves. I'm still trying to figure out, uh, if I click on John and I, do I draft him to pick that up? So, allow or not allow. I don't know. Still trying to figure this out. So we can chop trees. What we need to do is chop some trees and gather some items. But I'm going to start doing that in the next episode. So this was kind of a first look. What does it all look? What does it all mean? What are all the UI and stuff like that? I am at least going to do a second episode of this where we're actually going to do some stuff. So these are the first steps. First look at RimWorld Castle, or better said, uh, Castle RimWorld, <laughs> as I'm calling it, I don't know, uh, Realmberg. Let me know down in the comments what you think, and in the next one, we're going to start doing some stuff, but now we've got a general overview of what this all does and means and what it all looks like. So until next time, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and let me know if you play RimWorld, or maybe if you picked up this game. I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.